Good morning. The Honorable Andrew Scheer, Your Worship Mayor Nenshi, High Commissioners Swarup and Lanya Sunya, and members of the diplomatic community, representatives of all levels of government, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. We are gathered here this morning, I know, with heavy hearts, heavy from the shock of a sudden and unexpected loss. We have lost a friend, a colleague, a public servant, someone who touched the lives of so many people. But the Honourable Deepak Obrai was, first and foremost, a husband, a father, and a grandfather. So I know what we all say to Nina, Priti, Kajal, Aman, Devon, and Avisha. We know that nothing can take away the grief of the burden that you have felt over these past three weeks. But we hope that in some small way, the tremendous outpouring of support here in Calgary and across the country will offer some measure of comfort. You are in the hearts and the prayers and the thoughts of everyone and of so many more whom Deepak touched across the country and around the world. The Honorable Deepak O'Bry was a remarkable person who led a remarkable life. I was proud to know him as a supporter, colleague, and friend for almost two decades. And friends, it is no small task in only a few short minutes to speak to the breadth of Deepak's career and his many accomplishments. Born to Indian parents in Tanzania, Deepak O'Bry became no strangers to crossing borders at an early age. After primary and secondary school, he attended college in India. Later, he furthered his education in the United Kingdom, where he trained as an air traffic controller. In 1977, he and Nina and their young daughter, Pretty, chose to make Canada their home. Here, Deepak retrained as an accountant, and in this city, he launched a successful dry cleaning business. Not, surprising, not surprisingly, given his outgoing nature, Deepak soon became active in the Indo-Canadian community, volunteering with a number of different organizations, including the National Indo-Canadian Council. And it was not long before his passion for meeting people, for giving voice to their views, and for giving back to his adopted country led him to higher levels of public service. In, 1907, in 1997, Deepak was elected as the Reform Member of Parliament for Calgary East, and he never looked back. In the next six federal elections, in 2000, 2004, 2006, 2008, 2011, 2015, Deepak won the confidence of his constitu constituents with large margins every time. And there can be no doubt that, had God been willing, he would have made it eight successful campaigns in a few short weeks from now. He became the longest continuously serving Conservative Member of Parliament, the Dean of the Caucus, senior to all other members, as he frequently reminded me. <laughs> Friends, I want to highlight a few of Deepak's many accomplishments over these years. But above all else, first let me say that it was Deepak's character, his strength of personality, his commitment to core values, and his sheer determination that defined every aspect of his life. Not to forget his ever-present sense of humor that endeared him to all of us who knew him well. These qualities taken together saw Deepak through from his earliest days as a schoolboy in Arusha, Tanzania, to a businessman in Calgary, to a member of parliament, a member of the Parliament of Canada, and finally as an international representative of our country on official business around the world. Deepak loved one particular story that was often repeated of when he, when he accompanied Governor General Romeo LeBlanc on a state visit to Tanzania in 1999. During a visit to Deepak's old school, the Gigi addressed the students and said they should look to Deepak as an example of how far they can go in life if they had the will. 
Deepak was justifiably proud to be a breaker of glass ceilings. He reminded us that the strength of free and democratic societies is not in the virtuous narratives and vanity of our leaders, but in the simple aspirations of everyday hardworking families for a better life. And that there is no place better in this world to achieve those dreams than in Canada. Deepak lived the Canadian immigrant dream. And he led a generation of conservatives in demonstrating how to build relationships in communities of different backgrounds across the country. He understood the value of simply being present, the value of attending community events and celebrations, the value of just listening to the concerns of working people. For, in doing so, he opened countless doors for new Canadians to become involved in our political system, building a legacy of engagement for our party, party of which, which is unparalleled and which we are justifiably so proud. In 2006, I asked Deepak to serve as Parliamentary Secretary to the Minister of Foreign Affairs, a role later broadened to include responsibility for international human rights and later designated as a member of the Queen's Privy Council. Deepak held that position until 2015, the longest for anyone to have served in that capacity in our history. In the course of fulfilling these duties, Deepak regularly represented the government at forums and events on the global stage. Now when I say regularly, <laughs> there were times when I would go for months without actually seeing him. In fact, uh, some of you will recall I enjoyed on the occasion of his presence at one of our caucus meetings to announce to our members that Deepak was on one of his rare official visits to Canada. <laughs> Inevitably, of course, he would observe that he was simply going to the places that John Baird wouldn't. But all joking aside, these trips were not, often they were not easy. He once escaped a bomb blast in Nigeria. In Sri Lanka in 2013, he took my place when I boycotted the Commonwealth leaders' meetings. And he delivered a strong message about that government, the government of Sri Lanka's atrocious human rights record. But he went even further, despite his host's disapproval, he laid a wreath for the victims of Sri Lanka's civil war. It was a truly moving performance. Deepak was also a strong contributor to our determination to rebuild long neglected ties with the world's largest democracy, India. He understood that India must be one of Canada's key partners in the world of the 21st century. And he was at my side during my official visits to India in 2009 and 2012 in navy blue suits. <laughs> Deep, okay. Deepak was rightly proud, but he was rightly proud of the relationships we built with the governments of Prime Minister Singh and Prime Minister Modi. And he was not afraid to call out the Khalistani separatists who seek to divide that great nation, who seek to divide the Indo-Canadian community, and who perpetrated the worst terrorist attack in Canadian history. In 2002, Deepak had founded the Canada-India Parliamentary Friendship Group, and just two years later, he launched the Indo-Canadian Harmony Forum to strengthen and promote unity among Canada's very diverse Indian diaspora. These contributions to the bilateral relationship did not go unnoticed. In 2009, he was awarded the prestigious Pravasi Bharataya Saman, the highest award given to people of Indian origin who live outside of India. Yet perhaps Deepak's most proud legacy was launching the National Diwali celebration on Parliament Hill, bringing this great Hindu cultural tradition to our nation's capital. 
When he organized the first celebration in 1998, it was the first time ever the festival had been celebrated in the parliament of a Western democracy. Deepak continued the tradition for 18 consecutive years, bringing me to this event for eight of the 10 years that I was prime minister. And of course, continuously reminding me of the two years that I did not attend. <laughs> Deepak's energy for new challenges never faltered. In 2017, he stood for leader of the Conservative Party of Canada. As always, he was tireless in bringing his message to all corners of the land. He endeared himself to our fellow Canadians in Quebec by making great efforts to speak French. And while his campaign wasn't about victory, it conveyed a serious message, leading from the front, extending a hand, building new relationships, demonstrating that our party is open to all. I last met with Deepak less than a month before his passing. He wanted to talk about some business we were involved in and his plans for the next parliament. He did not let on how sick he was. Unsurprisingly, for anyone who knew him, Deepak was determined to have his boots on right to the end. That's just the kind of man that he was. Let me just say this in conclusion to Nina and family. We know that there are tremendous sacrifices made by those in public life. And those sacrifices are borne by the families in particular. By accepting those late nights, long absences, and missed family celebrations, you shared Deepak with all of us. You allowed him to make a tremendous and lasting contribution, one that reminds us all of who we are as Canadians, what we stand for, and how blessed we've been to call this country home. From the bottom of our hearts, thank you. Thank you for supporting Deepak through the long, his long years of public service. We grieve with you for your loss, and we stand beside you in saying that the Honorable Deepak O'Brien will not be forgotten.